CNN has seized upon the awful shooting at a Texas high school last week to spew fake news and push its political agenda at a record rate. We will break down the activists' false claims line by line. Then Kyle Kashev and Kenneth Preston stop by to discuss the media reaction. After that, Trump's prophetic streak continues as an MS-13 gang member named Animal, that's, his name is actually Animal, is sentenced to 40 years in prison and a literal sinkhole opens up on the White House lawn because God does not always paint with the subtlest brush. Finally, the lionization of pederast cult apologist Harvey Milk on This Day in History. I'm Michael Knowles and this is The Michael Knowles Show. There is so much to get to today. And that also, that phrase, pederast cult apologist, that might be the worst epitaph to possibly have. That is the one title I think I want to avoid in my life, pederast cult apologist. Nevertheless, the left makes this guy out to be the greatest hero of history. We will uh, discuss all the many myths of Harvey Milk. Before I get to any of those things, let me tell you about my bed. Let me bring you on in. You know that I'm getting married soon getting a little excited. Welcome. Come on into my boudoir, everybody. I'm talking about Bowl and Branch. I love Bowl and Branch. I love it so much. Bowl and Branch is the key to getting a great night's sleep. It's easier and more affordable than you think. You don't need an expensive mattress or sleeping pills to do that. You just need to change your sheets. Me being a derelict bachelor bum in my life, I'd go to, you know, the near store and I'd spend $3 and get sheets made of sandpaper because I, I didn't think it mattered what kind of sheets you have. It matters. It matters so much. Bowl and Branch sheets are so, so nice just slept on them about an hour ago. You know, I roll out of bed, then I come here and do this show. Uh, everything Bowling Branch makes from bedding to blankets is made from 100% organic cotton. They start out super soft. They get softer over time. You can uh, buy directly from them. So luxury sheets can cost $1,000 or more, but because they cut out the middleman, you buy directly from them. Uh, Bowling Branch sheets are made only a couple hundred bucks. Well, well worth it. Everyone who tries Bowling Branch loves them. That's why they have thousands of five-star reviews. Forbes, the Wall Street Journal, Fast Company, all talking about Bolin Branch. Even three U.S. presidents sleep on Bolin Branch sheets. Three U.S. presidents and one best-selling author of a blank book. That is a high recommendation of these fabulous, fabulous sheets. Shipping is free. You can try them for 30 nights. So look, whatever gutter you're lying in where you're watching this show from, just think about that. Free shipping. You get to try some bedding for 30 nights. That's a big win. But you won't want to send them back. You will love them. They're really nice. No risk. No reason not to give them a try. To get started, right now, my listeners, don't say I never did nothing for you. I'm giving you a wedding present for my wedding. Get $50 off your first set of sheets at bowlandbranch.com, promo code Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Michael. That's like my first name, Michael. Bowlandbranch.com, $50 off your first set of sheets. You're going to buy many more sets though, I bet. B-O-L-L and branch.com, promo code Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. That's my name. Okay. <laughs> They're really, really good. So much fake news to discuss. That was the only real news you're going to hear for the rest of the show. Because <laughs> now we got to get into fake news. So uh, th this is right out of the left-wing playbook. You, there was this awful shooting last week, and this is what they do. They wait for a tragedy to happen they pounce on it and they spread fake news. And I'm using fake news in a very specific way. I mean, they are lying about statistics. They're lying about incidents. And then they accuse anybody who questions that fake news of politicizing the incident. This happens every time. They, there's this tragedy. We say, okay, maybe we should all just calm down a little bit and mourn for what's happened. Then they spread a bunch of lies. We say, well, I, you know, that isn't correct, actually. They say, how dare you? You're politicizing this. I'm not politicizing this. So uh, you, you see this uh, has been happening all the time. We hear this from CNN. They say, including today's shooting incident at a Texas high school, this year there have already been 22 school shootings where someone was hurt or killed. That averages out to more than one shooting a week. That's a terrifying statistic, right? Sure, it just isn't true. The way they arrived at this statistic uh, is they included Incidents where at least one person is shot, not including the shooter, that it occurred on school grounds, grades K through college, through university level. It includes gang violence. It includes just brawls. It includes domestic violence. They even include the accidental discharge of any firearm, of any firearm at all. We're not just talking about big, scary guns. So here, here are some of the things that are included to, to let you arrive at that untrue statistic that there have been 22 school shootings this year. 
On April 9th in Globersville, New York, a student shot another student with a BB gun and that other student had a bruise on his, on his body. That counts. They include that in the statistic. They're trying to conflate someone hit, using a little pellet gun and it leaves a bruise to um, a major school shooting, which is awful, one, because it's dishonest, but it's disrespectful to the people who actually were victims of the shooting. March 13th in Seaside, California, a teacher accidentally discharged a firearm during a public safety class. No one was killed. Everyone was okay. They're comparing that to 10 people being killed. March 8th in Alabama, a non-student was shot at an apartment on the University of South Alabama campus. Non-student, not, but the image that they conjure on the left when they say this is some lunatic murderer going into an elementary school and killing children. But the, the statistic is including people, just some guy living on the campus. Wasn't even a student. February uh, in Itabena, Mississippi, a non-student was shot at a recreation center at Mississippi Valley State University. That's in there too. January 1st in Philly, a 32-year-old non-student was shot outside a high school after a fight. The guy's just walking around a high school. He ends up getting shot. He's 32 years old, but no, that's a school shooting because they need to make this number really scary because they need to politicize tragedy. When you take out all those extraneous incidents, the number becomes seven school shootings this year. And by the way, seven is bad. <laughs> that's not good. That's not, that number alone should be uh, alarming. But the meme that they use, the left's meme here, is to vastly exaggerate the numbers. And then when you point out the real numbers, you say, it's not 22, it's seven. They say, what? Seven's not enough? What? That's, that's nothing to you? I say, no, that, that's a big deal. But you're the one lying and multiplying it by more than three times what it actually is. Uh, you, you see this all the time. Here's just a quick little rundown from the mainstream media. And in that time, there have been 20 mass shootings, 20 mass shootings in the U.S. We have a pattern now of, of mass shootings in this country that uh, has no parallel anywhere else in the world. There you, you heard at the end, there is Barack Obama. It has no parallel anywhere else in the world. Tw 20 mass shootings. Now, of course, the number just changes because they just redefine mass shooting however they want to do it in order to make the number seem as big as possible. But what Barack Obama just said also isn't true. We don't, we aren't an outlier when you, you compare it to the rest of the world. We're not even an outlier when you compare mass shootings in the U.S. to Europe. When you define mass shooting to exclude gang violence and terrorist attacks, as any reasonable person would, mass shooting rates in the United States are on par with Europe. They're actually a little bit lower. They're, they're below Norway. They're below Macedonia. They're below Serbia, Slovakia, Finland, Belgium, and the Czech Republic. We're below all of those. But that doesn't jibe with the scare tactics. They want to say, the U.S. is crazy. It's just totally crazy out here. The implication being the United States has a second amendment. We need to get rid of that. But when you look at the actual numbers, eh, we're about where everyone else is. Here's, here's another one from CNN. And Jimmy Kimmel tweeted this. So you know, that's how you know it isn't funny is when Jimmy Kimmel tweets something. CNN wrote, quote, the U.S. has had 57 times as many school shootings as the other major industrialized nations combined. 288 school shootings since 2009. 288. Whoa. I don't remember that. Do you remember? You've been watching the news. The news breathlessly reports any of these things. 288. I don't, I don't, do, uh, no, that didn't happen, did it? Those numbers are pushed by uh, anti-gun groups, anti-Second Amendment groups, in particular, Every Town for Gun Safety, which is Mike Bloomberg's group. So uh, Jeff Greenfield, who's a longtime contributor to CNN, CBS, ABC, PBS, NBC, just every three-letter mainstream media left-wing hack shop, uh, he said in February 2018, quote, in the rest of the world, there have been 18 school shootings in the last 20 years. In the U.S., there have been 18 since January 1st. Even PolitiFact, which is a left-leaning website, rated that statement mostly false. This was a statement made by a well-respected member of the mainstream media who has worked for every <laughs> mainstream media outlet practically that there is. And he's getting his information, like so many of the others, from every town for gun safety. And just look, the left does this. I did a Prager video recently about language, how the left uses language and twists language to change uh, the narrative and to control the culture. They use the word every town for gun safety. I, now I've traveled through Texas, traveled through the South, traveled through the Midwest. I don't think those towns are the towns that want to abridge our second amendment, infringe on our gun ownership rights in the country. But they say every town, because they say, look, we all agree. 
We all agree it's every town for gun safety. So I thought you were talking about gun control. No, gun safety, because I have a safety on my gun. There's a little safety switch. And I click it up, click it down. That's my gun safety. I don't think they're advocating for that. I think they want to take away the guns. So every town includes, uh, among their countings of all of these uh, so-called shootings, they include on January 3rd, East Olive Elementary School in Michigan, a man committed suicide in that school parking lot. That's a mass shooting. That's a school shooting. Uh, Coronado Elementary in Arizona, a student committed suicide in the bathroom. There were no other injuries. Sad story. Not what we think of when we think of a school shooting, not a mass shooting. Murphy High in Alabama, student fired a gun into the air outside of school after an argument. I don't, maybe that's just how they celebrate down in Alabama, you know, like uh, that it was the one with the big mustache on Looney Tunes. Anyway, nobody was injured and that counts as a mass school shooting. Here is a Democrat running for governor in Florida. Here's what he's saying. We send our children off to school. We want to know they're safe. But here in Florida, despite 14 school shootings in eight years, we still have some of the weakest gun laws in the nation. That's Philip Levine. Not true. Not true. Flat out lies. So how does he get to that number? 14 school shootings in the last five minutes or whatever ridiculous scare claim he's making. Well, March 2012, an Episcopal, at the Episcopal School of Jacksonville, a Spanish teacher was fired and the disgruntled employee went and killed the, his boss, basically, the head of the school, then killed himself. It's not what we think of when we think of a school shooting. January 2013, there was a shooting in Fort Myers. A 27-year-old uh, was believed to have been killed by gangs in retaliation, a retaliation killing for speaking to cops. That's a 27-year-old. That's not a poor kid being uh, gunned down in his own school. March 2013, a 30-year-old student killed himself at the University of Central Florida. March 2014, an elementary school teacher was killed by her husband. All very sad stories, but to conflate it with these mass shootings is just a lie. Again, even left-leaning PolitiFact rated that mostly false. Here's another one. Let's roll some more mainstream clips. The school shootings in Oregon and at Washington State are just two among a startling number of school shootings this year. 22 News reveals how many there have been and how it's affecting people in western Massachusetts. 37. That's how many school shootings there have been in the U.S. this year. Every town for gun safety calculated the findings. Local parents say the statistics are alarming. We saturate ourselves too much in violence, our whole culture. And it just doesn't seem you can't do anything about it. It's like throwing a wiffle ball into the wind. What's even more shocking is the number of school shootings since the Sandy Hook massacre in December 2012. In the 18 months since, there have been 74 instances of shots fired on school grounds. Not true. Those numbers just are not right. Again, even PolitiFact, even left-leaning PolitiFact rates that mostly false. When you delve into the numbers of the 74, they say 74 numbers, how do you get to that number? When you get to actual school shootings, at the very highest count, that number is 10. Is that a high number? Yes. Is that number too high? Yes. Is it scary? Yes. Is it tragic? Yes. 10 of 74. There were another 39 that were caused by drug dealing, robbery, and personal altercations. That's nearly four times as many as we would call school shootings. How about incidents outside of school hours? They had nothing to do with the school. People just happened to be walking onto the school because it's public property. 16. That's a 60% uh, 60% higher than the number of actual school shootings. Suicide, 6. Accidental discharge, 3. 74 incidents that they count resulted in 38 deaths. Is that high? Yes. Is that sad? Yes. Relative to 74 incidents, though, that's a relatively modest number of deaths. Because if you say there have been 74 school shootings, what comes up into people's minds is 10 people killed at each of these. So you have this image in your mind that, I don't know, 740, 750 people have been killed in one of these school shootings. But really it's 38. And a lot are suicide, a lot are uh, gang related, a lot are, are robbery related. Nearly half, by the way, 35 of them, took place at colleges or universities. Again, you hear a school shooting and the left is so good at this when they politicize this issue constantly. You think of these poor little elementary school kids at Sandy Hook or something. Half of them are at colleges or universities, sometimes involving non-students, people in their 30s, people who are older. Whenever guns are involved, there is massive manipulation that happens on the left. Emotional manipulation, statistical manipulation, legal manipulation. Emotionally, they want to put these images in your head that are not true. Statistically, they exaggerate the numbers. Legally, they try to get around the Second Amendment. 
contrary to the mainstream media reporting, contrary to these sad events that do happen from time to time, there has been no spike in recent decades of children killed at schools. They, they say that there is an epidemic going on. It's uh, getting crazy. We have to do something. It's, it's getting so much worse. In fact, in reality, children killed in school shootings are down 75% since the early 1990s. They're not up 75%. They're not up 100%. It's fallen 75%. More children are killed each year by swimming pools and bicycles than by mass shootings in school, mass shootings in general. Over the past several decades, there have been gun control laws enacted. There have been gun control laws repealed. They have had no effect. They've had negligible effect on these numbers. And that includes the assault weapons ban of 1994, which then expired 10 years later. And that brings us to the gun control aspect here. Because in this recent, very sad shooting, there was no AR-15 used. In the recent shootings, the left, in order to push gun control and to politicize these tragedies, has said we need to ban semi-automatic rifles, AR-15s. It's the semi-automatic. Semi-automatic means you pull the trigger once and a bullet comes out. We know that five times as many people each year are murdered with knives as with rifles of any kind, including semi-automatic, including AR-15. We know one and a half times as many people are killed with baseball bats and clubs and hammers. We know that two times as many people are killed with hands and feet. We know that over 19 times as many people are killed with handguns as with rifles of any kind, including AR-15s. But in this shooting, no AR-15. This was a shotgun, a revolver, and, and homemade explosives, Molotov cocktails. I mean, this was a sick, sick puppy who committed this act, but he wasn't using the AR-15. In fact, the shotgun was pump action. It wasn't even semi-automatic. He had to uh, pump the shotgun, which means we're talking about the simplest gun that there is. Pra- there's practically no simpler gun in the country. This isn't some super high-tech thing. Very basic gun. The gun control crowd has pounced on the shooting but what are they going to say now? They can't say, hey, this scary looking gun, we need to just ban this one. Because now we're talking about the most basic gun there is. So it gets, I think, to the heart of the argument. To help us make sense of the media reaction, I have got two guys here who have a lot of experience in the media spotlight on gun control. Kyle Kashiv and Kenneth Preston. We're going to talk to them in just one second. But before, and now that, now that I, you know that we have them here, it's going to be expert opinion and discussion. I need you to listen to Little Bits. Little Bits is really good. A wonderful sponsor. And listen, you know, these guys are, these guys are pretty young, 18, 19 years old. And we try to reach the youth in this uh, program. So I'm going to tell you about it. An award-winning platform of easy to use electronic building blocks for creating inventions large and small. I uh, have this to send to my uh, uh, nephew, because I wasn't, I wasn't going to keep the, it's a, it's a toy. It's a really cool, sophisticated toy from little bits. It's the complete droid kit. It looks really neat. I wasn't going to build it myself. You know, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm a little old for that. I don't know. Meanwhile, I walk down the hallway at the daily wire. All the 30 year olds are pouring out, begging me to have the toy. I'm sending it to my little nephew. Uh, this is amazing. Six bits, 20 droid parts, three sticker sheets, a free app. App has step-by-step instructions, video tutorials, uh, drive mode, force mode, uh, self-navigation, 20 authentic droid sounds from the Star Wars films. It's it just, if this toy had been out when I was a kid, I was also sort of a Star Wars fanatic. I would have gone crazy for it. 22 missions, more than 22 missions in the app uh, to teach the droid new skills, customize new droids, uh, give them personality coding. It's really, really cool. I'm, I'm very lucky. I never know what to get my nephews, you know, for Christmas or whatever the holiday. So I send this over. This is the toy because I, I looked it up too. Everyone is saying this is like the toy of the year. It actually won the Toy Association's 2018 Toy of the Year. So get it for your kids and inspire invention. Uh, really, you can't go wrong. This is such a cool toy. Uh, my nephew uh, really, really likes it. Visit littlebits.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, just like Jay-Z's wife, for $10 off a droid inventor kit. Don't say I never did nothing for you. Littlebits.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, $10 off a droid inventor kit. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. We've got Kyle Kashev, Kenneth Preston. What are you guys doing in town? Uh, We were at a convention a few days ago, a gun convention, and we've just been going around and seeing this deplorable city. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it is. It is a deplorable city. I, well, I got to say, you make very astute observations. You have become, because I've had you both on my show before, 
we came on after the shooting at your high school. You came on to talk about the media reaction, this media frenzy that came around the high school. And then Kenneth, you produced this incredible report. I think you're the last journalist in America. It's you and Cheryl Atkinson. At, you actually produced this investigative report on all of the abuses, all of the total failures at Broward County uh, that led to that shooting, that, that they, they might have a lot of guilt on their hands for allowing this guy to slip through the cracks. In the meantime, since I've talked to you both, you have become a Twitter star. <laughs> Kyle, you are, it is one of the best Twitter accounts on the internet. Thank you. It, it, you are making all of these observations. I think you're doing better than perhaps some other young activists around the country. I would agree. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you would. Uh, so I, I want to begin, uh, Kyle, you are recently, I saw this tweet, you are currently ranked number one in your high school yes, class. Yes, sir. You don't go on CNN as much as members of your high school class, but you are ranked. No, they cut me off. They cut you, CNN cut you yeah, off. Yeah, I was of, supposed to go on and they, uh, they cut off from the inter- interview. Did they really? Yeah. No. They backed out. It's, is it, it's, well, I wonder what, it, what's the difference? What is it about you that might. I couldn't tell you. I, I don't know what it is. It I couldn't, absolutely couldn't. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're number one in your class. By the way, I hate to break this to you. There is no way that your teachers in school administration are ever <laughs> going to let you be valedictorian. That is just not going to happen. I've doubled down on taking more classes this summer. Just have you to really? Make sure. yeah. what, are you, what classes are you taking? I'm taking like three random college classes that I've never heard of before just to make sure I solidify number one. I don't know if I took three classes in college. I, I did a lot of things in college. I don't know if I took <laughs> three whole classes. Do, in a serious note, do you find it hard? You've become this media celebrity since the shooting because you came out and said enough is enough with the, the media manipulation here. Yeah, I called you, BS. You called BS on it. You happened to be a supporter of the Second Amendment. That was very taboo. Uh, do, you, do you find it's hard to manage remaining a high school student, staying number one in your class, and having all of this attention on you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like I have to make sure I don't slip up in any way, shape, or form where I'm going to be. Um, the, the media will definitely jump on it. Specifically at school, I get a lot of hate. I get stare downs at school. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like I keep a tracker every day of how many people stare me down. It's close to like two to three people every day. Do, do you, is the, the school's very left wing? Yes, very. Of course, like all schools are. Absolutely. Uh, certainly. That, uh, and now, so, but you become a Twitter celebrity. All in all, I'm very happy about that because you have a, a great <laughs> perspective. Uh, Kenneth, you have produced this serious body of work, serious allegations against local officials. It was briefly reported by some people in the conservative media, and basically it's been blacked out. No one is reporting on this. What's going on? Uh, well, there was a there was a media blip for just a moment, and and exactly as you said, it disappeared. Uh, we, we had some traction. Marco Rubio called for an investigation into some of our claims. So, you know, behind the scenes things are going on, but really local officials, local media, nobody's covering it. The, the interesting thing, though, is that we finally had, uh, they were denying for months that any of the information was true or correct and the superintendent had to come out and finally admit to the fact that uh, they were misleading at the beginning. Um, they said that the student was never part of these discipline programs when in fact a reporter revealed that that the student was. He was referred to the, the, the shooter program. was part of these discipline correct. programs and because of the policies of Broward County, correct. he was not processed. They said, oh, we're going to sweep this under the rug. Basically. And they denied that from the beginning and finally it, it came to light that that was the truth. This is, this is really interesting work, and it actually shows something in the culture, both of you guys, because the mainstream media, they try to create a big show. They try right. to create the illusion of popular support, but it's, it seems astroturfed, oh, doesn't yeah. it? You know, you're, you're doing, you know, some of your classmates will go on TV and, and just lie, say fa- fake statistics, oh, yeah. uh, slander U.S. senators and civil rights advocates, and they're lauded and applauded. The minute that you contravene that orthodoxy in the media, the minute you start going after the media, uh, they turn on you. They try to shut you down. You you have some issues uh, at school, but also issues with the local law enforcement officials. I I, I do want your thoughts uh, broadly because I've tried to only focus these conversations on the media. The, The media have descended on Parkland and Broward County. This debate has gone on a long time. In its, in its most recent iteration. It, uh, in this recent shooting at the San, uh, Santa Fe, Texas, the killer was on the honor roll. The killer was a football player. The killer was apparently just a regular high school student. There weren't a lot of signs. There, he didn't fall through the cracks of disciplinary programs as far as we know. 
and yet people demand no more, never again, we need to do something, we need to prevent these from ever happening again. Is there a chance that this just was not preventable? Well, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, there are certain aspects where it could have been prevented had there been the proper school resource officers on campus being able to defend it. That's why you see the kids mm. calling. We want to arm schools. We want to, like, harden schools. But I think fundamentally what the left is proposing for, like, the, for the shooting that happened in my school would not have stopped the, te- the, the Texas shooting that we see right now. That's, that's a really good point. Uh, it didn't, didn't even occur to me. You're right. If you have people there who can physically stop these shootings. Yeah, because once the shooter is on campus, you're screwed unless you have someone. Like, the cliche is that only a good guy with a gun can stop a bad guy with a gun, but it's true. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's the only way you can stop them. Yeah, that's right. Just to call it a cliche doesn't mean it isn't true. It's obviously, it is obviously true. Uh, I want to know, you know, uh, our pal around here, you, you know, we broadcast from the broom closet of the Ben Shapiro show. The guy who br- broadcasts from the studio of the Ben Shapiro show, he says facts don't care about your feelings. But it seems like the gun control activists and the media don't care about facts. I mean, we just ran through all of those bogus statistics that they are breathlessly reporting. Support for stricter gun laws is at the highest level it's been since 1993, uh, despite the fact that no gun law proposed in recent years would have prevented any of these shootings. How can we combat that perception? What is the way to get people to care about facts on the gun debate? Well, I I think it's it's not necessarily just a gun debate. It's it's something that should be looked at as a multifaceted issue. And I think the way to do that is to bring them the fact that, look, it whatever your feeling is on guns, there were systematic failures that led to the, the, the body count that day. Systematic failures. And to show them that, to present the evidence, and to now what we're doing is running school board members and, and showing them that there is a better way. I, I believe that once we implement those changes and things start to fix themselves, that the conversation is going to begin to shift. That's such, a, that's such a good point. And to hear you speak about this, you sound like adults. The reason, you know, I was real. I got. I have to admit, I was very hesitant at first to talk to you guys about gun control because be. I don't. Yeah, I should, certainly should, should be. be. Well, because I think just because a 17-year-old or an 18-year-old has lived through some experience, that doesn't make him an expert on constitutional law or oh, yeah. crime prevention. And then CNN put your classmates on TV immediately and said, "Get emotional." Get. But to hear you talk about it. You, you're not impassioned and calling people names and you're, you're looking at this in a very systematic way and saying, oh, maybe that, maybe that law, if that, if that law hadn't been in place, he, this guy would have been caught. If this policy had been enforced, if this money had been spent, if the, you can actually do it in a very rational and s- systematic way, that is utterly missing from the debate on this issue. I want to know what is next for you guys. You're the last journalist in America, Kenneth. Uh, what's next? What can we look for from you? Well, Where can we find you? Sure. Right Right now, I, all I'm doing is working on school board races, ensuring that the current leadership uh, is not here come November uh, so that we can harden our schools. What we want to do is make sure that Broward County is an example to the rest of the country of what a school district can be. And after that, just continuing to expose some elected officials that have some some answering to do. It's great work because it's not glamorous. First of all, running those races is not glamorous. I've run a bunch of small races. Running them is not glamorous. Covering local politics is not glamorous, but it is the most important work in politics. So Godspeed with that. Kyle, we're just following you on Twitter. I will continue bashing liberals with their leftist tears every single day on Twitter, <laughs> and I'm going to make sure I fight for the Second Amendment nonstop. You know, it's, it is a more glamorous way of life, I will say, having done it myself. It's very fun and very important. Gentlemen, so good to see you Thank both. You for I, I look forward to seeing you guys next time you're back in town. I've got to say goodbye to you people before we get to the news. We have so much good news today. We, a guy, you know, Donald Trump calls MS-13 animals. The mainstream media defend them. They say they're not animals. And then a, an MS-13 guy is literally named animal. He gets sentenced to 40 years in jail for murdering a 15-year-old boy. We will get to that. We will get to all of the lies about Harvey Milk. We will get to this day in history, but you got to go to dailywire.com. Go there right now. Why? It is $10 a month, $100 for an annual membership. You get me, you get the Andrew Clavin show, you get the Ben Shapiro show. Ask questions in the mailbag, ask questions on the conversation. I don't know. I'll give you a back rub or something. I don't know what it comes with, but you get the leftist tears tumbler. Here it is. Here it is, folks. When that guy, you're going to have 40 years of leftist tears as Mr. Animal from MS-13 is rotting away in prison as we talk about the reality of Harvey Milk. Go there right now, dailywire.com. We'll be right back. All right. 
So we've got a lot of news to get to today. Uh, really cool to talk to those guys, by the way. Let's try to run through it in the last 10 minutes. So before we get to this day in history and Harvey Milk, Donald Trump is a prophet. He actually is a prophet. An MS-13 gang member nicknamed Animal receives a 40-year prison sentence this week for conspiracy to murder a 15-year-old boy. Joel Martinez admitted to prosecutors that he murdered this boy. Quote, I stabbed the culero three times. He stared at me and he asked me if I was going to, if I was going to stab him. I told him, yes, the Mara rules you. Mara for the name of his gang. Killing people is a requirement for achieving full status in the Massachusetts chapter of MS-13. And the, and the left denies this. Donald Trump attacks MS-13. The left begins to defend it. Why is it? What's going on here? Why does it say, this seems to be the case a lot with Trump. Trump will say something and then it'll just happen. <laughs> you say, and you, you saw this throughout the 2016 campaign. You say, how does he do this? The, the reason, it's not because he's Nostradamus. It's because Donald Trump observes reality. That's actually why. That's why he was a good marketer. That's why he was a good TV personality. It's why he was good in business. He observes reality. He's a people person. So he sees what's actually happening. The mainstream media don't do that. The mainstream media are caught in their own ideological views of the world. You see this with some conservatives who remain stubbornly anti-Trump. I think there's only one of them left. Uh, He writes for one of those legacy uh, conservative magazines and, and tweets all the time. And but uh, I think most have come around, you know, some of the, the really anti-Trump voices, Jonah Goldberg, I was pleased to see, said he would vote for Donald Trump. A uh, number of others, you know, have said, okay, we'll come along. I had Ben Wore the MAGA hat a long time ago, actually. He came around a long time ago. And, but some people are, they stick in this despite all of the evidence to the contrary. Why is that? Because they're in an ideological world, just, just like the mainstream media. It's just two sides of the same coin. But in the real world of politics, where things are actually happening in real time, that that lower C conservatism, that's where Donald Trump is getting everything right. And just because, in, in case you thought that God sometimes paints with too subtle a brush, a literal sinkhole has now opened up on the White House lawn. So they're actually in the swamp. An actual sinkhole is trying to engulf the Trump White House. Uh, one opened up uh, over the weekend. A second one uh, opened up next to it got noticeably bigger between Sunday and Monday. It's over a foot long now. Uh, I guess you could say all nature is but art unknown to the all chance direction, which thou canst not see. (laughs) This is an important sign. This is a symbol and it should remind us of something. Uh, I don't know how much of reality is being reflected by the White House lawn, but it is certainly the case that The swamp of Washington, D.C. is trying to swallow this president. A lot of people took the wrong lessons from Watergate, and we're seeing some of that play out again. There is a concerted political effort to take down this president. They want him impeached. They want him subpoenaed. They want him prosecuted. They want him any way to get this guy out of office because they cannot accept the election. Democrats are known for this. They couldn't accept the 2000 election. They never let that go. They couldn't accept the 2016 election because they were so sure. They're trying to swallow up this president by any means necessary. It's a really dangerous thing. Republicans don't do this when uh, Democrats win elections. Even Barack Obama, who was so awful, he was just such a bad president, both in that he was feckless and undermined American credibility, but also he was so radically left-wing and obviously didn't like America very much. The reason we know that he didn't like America very much is he said he wants to fundamentally transform it and you don't want to fundamentally transform things that you like. (laughs) So even that guy, we didn't try to impeach him. There was never any serious effort on the right to impeach Barack Obama. Congress never voted to impeach the guy. Uh, But they're trying to get Donald Trump. This is why we need to rally around and defend Donald Trump because the sinkhole on the White House lawn, figurative and literal, is trying to swallow him up whole. Politics is a team sport. There are parties. You play for a team. And it's not frivolous. It's not some little hobby. You're on that team because you believe what that team is doing. You support what that team is doing. Uh, The reason that I support Donald Trump is not because I'm a Republican. I'm a Republican because I believe certain things. I'm a conservative because I have a vision for the country. Donald Trump is the is the captain of that team right now. And you've got to support him. Even if you don't like the way he sips Chardonnay, even if he doesn't put his pinky out the right way, he's the guy, he's doing the right thing. And you've got to come along because politics is a team sport. And if you try to extract yourself above that or say, oh, I don't, I don't want to be on this team. Uh, that, that isn't how, that isn't how politics is done. That isn't what it is. Uh, so I, I 
urge everybody to beware of the sinkhole that is about to swallow up the White House. Finally, before we get out of here. This day in history, we got to talk about Harvey Milk. Did you know it's Harvey Milk Day? It's happy Harvey Milk Day, everybody. Do you know that? Does any, do people even know who Harvey Milk is? No, because they did this. This all came about because Hollywood, like it always does, made a totally dishonest film about a left winger and tried to make him into a hero. And all of a sudden there was all this pro Harvey Milk activism. Harvey Milk was a gay activist in San Francisco in the 1970s. He's the first openly gay elected official in California. He ran for office four times in San Francisco, didn't win most of the time. Eventually, he got onto the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. He only served there for, I think, 11 months before he was assassinated. Be- not assassinated because he was gay, by the way, assassinated uh, by a political opponent, basically, who assassinated a straight guy, too. They've created this uh, lionized character of Harvey Milk in recent years. There was a Sean Penn movie made, and he was the fighter, and people were attacking him because he was gay. They tried to bomb out his store, and they assassinated him because he was gay. None of that is true. There was a, a bomb attack on his store, but his friends admitted in later years that Harvey Milk was probably complicit in planning that because the campaign wasn't doing very well, to quote them, and he needed to get a little bit more attention. Harvey Milk moved to San Francisco along with lots of other gay men in the early 1970s. He was finally elected in 1978, and uh, I mean, after this movie came out, the California established Harvey Milk Day in 2009. Barack Obama awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom that year. Who's the real Harvey Milk? Well, what do we know about the guy? We know that he was basically a pederast cult leader. He preyed on a 16-year-old runaway named Jack Galen McKinley. The age of consent in California, by the way, is 18 years old. You thought that the Republicans had a problem with Roy Moore. To hear the left talk about Roy Moore, you, you'd think, I mean, and the, these were allegations that weren't quite proven. There were discrepancies with some of the evidence. It was in the heat of a political campaign. We hadn't heard about this before because Roy Moore had a a fling with a 16-year-old girl, allegedly. This guy, Harvey Milk, wins the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He had an open relationship when he was in his 30s with a 16-year-old runaway boy. But it it gets worse from there. Uh, Harvey Milk was also pals with Jim Jones. Where have I heard that name before? Uh, The guy who passed around the Kool-Aid, killed 900 people at the People's Temple in Guyana. He was good friends with Jim Jones. uh, Harvey Milk regularly attended the People's Temple. He defended Jim Jones to Jimmy Carter. So there was an inquiry into Jim Jones because Jim Jones abducted a six-year-old kid in Guyana, six-year-old little boy. And Harvey Milk wrote to Jimmy Carter and said, Jim Jones is a man of the highest character. You've got, he slandered the kid's own parents who were down there. Uh, He worked together with Jim Jones. He used them as help for his campaign. Uh, Harvey Milk was, he was a nobody. He was a guy of questionable past. He he did believe strongly in uh, promoting gay political rights. And that's all the left needed to know about him to turn him into a hero. But he wasn't a hero. In his personal life, he was an absolute derelict. (laughs) He was the sort of guy where if he were a Republican, people would want, the left would want to throw him in jail. But because he supported gay rights, they had to create a narrative about him. And the left always does this. You'll see, they'll go on television, they'll say, they'll, they'll make some outrageous claim. And then when you point out that it isn't true, they'll say, yeah, it's not true, but it gets to a larger truth. What? Yeah, no, it's a lie. But the lie, but the lie, you know, it's a larger truth. So how do you get to that? That's because it's all about illusion. It's all about, look over here, it's all Hollywood glitz and glamour. And that's what's happened with Harvey Milk. The cartoon character of Harvey Milk that, that uh, Sean Penn played in that movie has very little, if anything, to do with Harvey Milk himself. You're seeing this happen in the mainstream media every single day. So the mainstream media, they say Donald Trump has never been more unpopular. It's over. He colluded with Russia. He did this to a porn star. He blah, 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 blah. All of this noise, right? And yet we look at the polling. Trump is still quite popular. More popular or as popular as Barack Obama on the relative days of their presidency. The economy is doing well. Uh, electoral chances are looking good. I don't want to jinx it, but maybe tomorrow we'll go into some of the data on those races. Things on, in reality, when you talk to people in reality, are looking pretty good. Don't be fooled by the left-wing illusion. Don't be fooled by Harvey Milk Day. Don't be fooled by Hollywood. Don't be fooled by the New York Times or CNN or the Washington Post. Take a look around reality because when people look at reality, they're, they're able to predict the future. They're able to do very well 
Uh, they're able to, to see kind of what's in the air, what's going on. And we've, we've seen that with the Donald Trump movement. It's an important political lesson to gather from President Kofefe. We'll have much more Kofefe tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. Tune in tomorrow. I've only got a couple shows left before I head off to my wedding, folks. If you want to send me celebratory wedding Cuban cigars and bars of gold and piles of money, let me know. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Senia Villarreal. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Senior producer, Jonathan Hay. Our supervising producer, Mathis Glover. And our technical producer is Austin Stevens. Edited by Jim Nickel. Audio is mixed by Mike Coromina. Hair and makeup is by Jesua Olvera. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire Forward Publishing production. Copyright Forward Publishing 2018.